For decades, the global heavy armor market operated under a singular, undisputed assumption. If a nation required a main battle tank capable of dominating the European theater, the German Leopard II was the gold standard. It was the preferred choice of NATO member states, a symbol of engineering excellence and the backbone of Western armored divisions. However, the geopolitical shockwaves following the invasion of Ukraine have exposed a critical vulnerability in the German defense industry. While the engineering remains top tier, the industrial capacity to produce it has stagnated. Into this vacuum has stepped a challenger from the east. The K-2 Black Panther, designed and manufactured in South Korea, is no longer just a domestic asset for the Korean Peninsula. It has emerged as the most viable alternative to the German monopoly, fundamentally altering the landscape of the global arms trade through a combination of manufacturing speed, cost efficiency, and strategic technology transfer. The catalyst for this shift lies in the supply shock that hit Europe in 2022. As nations scrambled to modernize their arsenals and donate older equipment to Ukraine, the demand for new tanks skyrocketed. The German manufacturing consortiums, led by Kraus Maffe Wegmann and Rheinmetall, found themselves constrained by a peacetime production model. Ordering a newly built Leopard 2A8 today entails a waiting period that stretches toward the end of the decade, with delivery timelines estimated between three to five years. For nations on the eastern flank of NATO, such as Poland, this timeline presented an unacceptable security risk. Security requirements were immediate, not theoretical projected needs for 2030. This creates the precise market condition where South Korea has thrived. The defining characteristic of the South Korean defense industry is not merely technological parity, but industrial responsiveness. The contract between Warsaw and Seoul serves as the definitive case study for this new dynamic. Following the signing of executive contracts, Hyundai Rotom began delivering K-2 tanks to the Polish land forces within months, not years. By early 2025, over 100 K-2 tanks had already arrived in Poland, fully operational and integrated into their mechanized divisions. In stark contrast, during the same time frame, the delivery volume of modernized German tanks to various European clients remained in the single or low double digits. This ability to surge production, derived from the constant state of readiness maintained by the Republic of Korea Armed Forces, has become the most potent sales pitch for South Korean armor. Beyond the logistics of delivery, a technical and operational divergence separates the two competitors. The Leopard 2, particularly in its latest A8 configuration, has grown increasingly heavy, pushing towards 70 tons. While this provides immense protection, it complicates logistics, requiring specialized bridges and rail transport capable of supporting such mass. The K2 Black Panther, conversely, was designed for the mountainous and rugged terrain of the Korean Peninsula. Weighing approximately 55 tons, the K-2 offers superior tactical mobility and is far better suited for the bridges and infrastructure found across much of Eastern Europe and developing nations. Furthermore, the design philosophy of the K-2 addresses a looming demographic crisis faced by many modern militaries. The recruitment of soldiers is becoming increasingly difficult across the developed world. The German Leopard 2 relies on a human loader, necessitating a crew of four. The K2 utilizes an automatic loading system, reducing the crew requirement to three. This reduction allows military planners to man more vehicles with fewer personnel, a crucial factor for nations facing shrinking populations and recruitment shortfalls. 
While German purists argue that a human loader offers better situational awareness and maintenance capacity, the market is increasingly favoring the automated efficiency that South Korean engineers have perfected. The pricing structure further amplifies the Korean advantage. A new Leopard 2A8, depending on the support package, commands a premium price that can exceed 30 million US dollars per unit when including long-term support and ammunition. The K2 offers a significantly more accessible price point, often estimated between 15 million and 20 million US dollars. For mid-sized powers, this price differential allows for the acquisition of a larger fleet for the same budget, prioritizing mass and coverage over the absolute pinnacle of armor protection. However, the most sophisticated element of the South Korean strategy is not the hardware itself, but the willingness to share the means of production. Germany has historically been restrictive regarding the export of manufacturing licenses, preferring to keep high-value production domestic. Seoul has taken the opposite approach. The deals negotiated with Poland include provisions for the K2PL, a localized variant to be produced within Poland. This transfer of technology transforms the buyer relationship from a simple client status to an industrial partner status. It appeals to national aspirations for sovereignty and economic development, effectively utilizing the tank deal to build the client nation's own defense sector. This strategy is now yielding results beyond Eastern Europe. In late 2024, the K2 made its historic entry into the South American market with a breakthrough in Peru. The Peruvian army seeking to replace aging T-55 units selected the South Korean platform over offers from traditional suppliers. This marks a significant geopolitical pivot, breaking the historical dominance of Russian and American equipment in the region. Furthermore, negotiations with Romania indicate another potential major foothold in NATO. Bucharest is currently evaluating the K2 against the M1 Abrams and the Leopard 2. The South Korean value proposition in these talks emphasizes rapid modernization and local industrial cooperation, a pitch that resonates deeply with nations eager to revitalize their own economies while bolstering defense. It is important to maintain an objective perspective on the limitations of the South Korean advance. The Leopard 2 remains deeply entrenched in the logistical backbone of Europe. A vast network of users creating a Leopard coalition allows for shared maintenance, ammunition, interoperability, and training. Germany is also moving to correct its production issues, albeit slowly. The Leopard 2A8 remains arguably the most well-protected tank in the world, and for nations where budget and time are secondary to maximum survivability, it remains the premier choice. Additionally, South Korea still faces challenges regarding the complete indigenization of components. While great strides have been made to replace German transmission systems with domestic alternatives, the legacy of technological interdependence remains a factor in export clearances for certain sensitive markets. Nevertheless, the trajectory is clear. The era of the German tank monopoly has ended. The market has bifurcated into two distinct segments. One segment comprises nations deeply integrated into the German supply chain, willing to pay a premium and wait for the established prestige of the Leopard. The other segment comprises pragmatic nations facing immediate threats, budget constraints, and a desire for industrial autonomy. For this second group, which grows larger as global instability increases, the K2 Black Panther has become the primary option. South Korea has successfully positioned itself not merely as a vendor of weapons, but as a comprehensive solution provider for national defense. 
by leveraging the urgent requirements of the post-2022 security environment, Seoul has converted its domestic necessity for constant war readiness into a global competitive advantage. The K2 Black Panther is no longer just a gap filler for delayed German orders. It has established a new pole in the global arms market, proving that, in the modern era of warfare, the ability to deliver hardware immediately is just as critical as the hardware itself. The industrial might of Olsen and Changwon has proven that it can outpace the traditional arsenals of the Ruhr Valley, signaling a permanent realignment in the hierarchy of global land warfare systems. 